Salam alaikum and hello viewers. Today I am with you with another important video, which is how to conduct research at undergraduate level. This is basically data collection method. So as you can see, how you can collect your data. This is one of the important aspects of your research. In research, you need to write paper, you need to write your title, you need to collect your data, you need to study literature. There are many steps, there are many aspects of research. So one of the important aspect is how you can collect your data that is called research methodology uh, of your writing part. <clears throat> this particular, as you can see, I put here different figures, uh, how they are preparing their sample, how they are samples looks like, color, visual appearance, uh, conducting experiment. <clears throat> And in this table, as you can see, there are different types of parameters. These we call data and they are rate before and after. So this is one examples of how you can collect your data. This is called how to conduct your research to generate data, to collect data, to obtain data, to model, simulate, and so on. So this is one important aspect to conduct your research, to write your paper. Before writing your paper, you need to collect your data, you need to generate your data. This is called how to conduct your research to generate your data, to collect your data. So those who are new, uh, first time watching this video, as you can see, there are overall nine topics uh, for research at undergraduate level. So far, topic number one, topic number two, topic number three, including uh, some overview of undergraduate research I have already covered. So today, main focus is how to conduct research, uh, that is research methodology to collect your data. So what are the methods in collecting data? As you can see, there are basically four methods. One of them is experimental. This is the most extensively uh, used method. Many researchers are particularly focused on experimental because this is very stronger uh, ways of uh, obtaining data one of the best method, one of the universal method to produce your data is by experiment. You have to conduct experiment. As you can see here, this is in our uh, lab. So we conduct uh, experiment in our lab. We have impressive lab facilities. Our team members conduct experiment using experimental facilities to generate the data that is called experimental facilities. Uh, but sometimes it is very expensive because uh, expensive equipments are needed. Then second um, approach is computational simulation, modeling. Um, since sometimes experimental facilities are not available and it is also time consuming. So computational facilities using uh, high-end computers uh, modeling tools, simulation tools, uh, such as NCs, transies, artificial neural network, MATLAB, um, SPSS. So there are a number of computational tools, numerical models, simulation models, commercial computational tools are there. Using all those tools, you can generate your data that is called computational simulations, modeling, numerical, and there can be also analytical approaches <clears throat> to data. <clears throat> Sometimes both experimental and modeling are carried out to make your research very, very strong. To make both your experimental and modeling part, <clears throat> how strong they are, how <clears throat> close their results are. 
<coughs> third method is some <coughs> qualitative quantitative research where some survey observation interview some uh, <coughs> panel discussions are made to get the data <coughs> so in this case you need to design your questionnaire <coughs> survey work through which you can generate your data you can get your data data also can be collected from literature from published data or let's say sometimes uh, some of the research organization, for example, Malaysian Industrial Development Authority, uh, some <clears throat> weather related institute, they uh, produce data for wind, solar, weather related data. So from those uh, <clears throat> organization, you can collect the data and then you can <clears throat> analyze uh, data to publish in scientific journals. So these are basically four approaches, four methods by which you can generate your data, you can collect your data, you can conduct your experiment, you can conduct your model, simulation, survey work, interview, observation, <clears throat> and so on to generate your data. <clears throat> so this is important slide. So uh, in this case, there are two slides. Uh, there are different steps in collecting data. Since you are undergraduate, so I'm trying to give some uh, basic uh, ways how you can um, collect your data. <clears throat> of course, uh, to design your experiment, to understand the experiment, to understand the research parameters, constant variables, first of all, you need to study literature. As you can see, literature can be uh, book, journal paper, conference paper, internet report, web report, uh, thesis, dissertation, and so on. So from this literature, uh, literature has many parts. For example, literature we call it journal paper. A journal paper has title, introduction, abstract, literature, methodology, result discussion, conclusions, references. So when you are going to uh, design your paper, particularly to generate data, to collect data. In that case, you need to specifically focus uh, mostly on methodology part of that paper, how they have conducted the research. That part, if you uh, study, <clears throat> and you need to note down the different points, parameters, this is called the literature study, the importance of literature study to collect data, to design data, to identify parameters, and so on. <clears throat> so that is the purpose of literature. So in the previous uh, presentation, I identified, I showed you different types of literature, databases, Science Direct, LCBR, IEEE, Taylor's, Francis, uh, ProQuest Digital Dissertation. So you download the papers. <clears throat> and you read the methodology part of your uh, paper. And second step is uh, in the literature study, in the method part of your paper, read number of papers, four papers, five papers, six papers, 10 papers, relevant papers, you read them and purpose is to identify what are the parameters you are going to investigate. So it can be constant variable, it can be dependent variable, it can be independent variable, so different types of parameters, variables, uh, design parameters, identify them. You study pa paper number one, two, three, four, so you see what type of parameter they have studied, okay? Input parameter, output parameter, constant parameters, variables, <clears throat> different types of parameters. You study the literature, you note down, you identify and you put it there. So after studying four paper, five paper, 10 papers, you finalize that these are the parameters, whether it can be dependent, independent, constant, or we can we call it design parameter, you identify them. <clears throat> Once you have identified the different types of parameters, variables, then you need to design your experiment, model, survey, questionnaire. So meaning that <clears throat> what would be the range, let's say you identify temperature, you identify concentration, you identify uh, relative humidity, you identify uh, solar uh, or wind speed. Now let's say the temperature. So what would be the range of your temperature? Minimum temperature, maximum temperature, um, 
average temperature. So you need to identify all those parameters. Again, you need to study method part of your literature, and then you can design the parameters. What would be highest value? What would be lowest value? What would be the concentration? What would be the range? Different types of parameters, their range, operating parameters, you need to come out. If you want to design a model, okay, what are the <clears throat> different modeling parameters? If you want to design your survey questionnaire, what would be the uh, age group? What is the time limitations? What are the duration? What would be the focus group? So different parameters, you need to come out with each and every details. That is called design of your experiment, model, survey, and questionnaire. Again, <clears throat> method part of your literature will help you to identify the parameters, to design your parameters, range, operational range, concentration and each and every details, actually you can get it from published literature. Also from this uh, literature study from different journal papers, conference papers, identify at the same time, along with the different parameters, identify what are the materials, chemicals, reagents, and any other variables relevant to your study. Okay, so as you can see, you need to study the different types of literature, you need to identify your materials, consumables, chemicals, reagents, and different types of parameters. As you can see, uh, water um, related various parameters you need to identify. I have given you an uh, examples. <clears throat> see the uh, second steps in collecting data. So once you have identified necessary chemicals, materials, reagents, then how you are going to conduct your experiment. So you need to identify necessary equipment, software, statistical tools, computational tools. Again, when you study the method part of the literature, paper, journal paper, conference paper, um, thesis, in that section actually you can see what type of equipment they have used. Let's say TGA, DSC, uh, thermal conductivity meter, software, NCs, transies, SPSS, MATLAB, and any statistical related tool. So you read the literature, you identify necessary equipments as well. If you um, cannot identify, uh, those are available in your lab, so you can identify some uh, from other sources as well. So once you have identified necessary parameters, you have identified equipment, software tools, you have uh, acquired necessary chemicals, consumables, reagents, then you need to prepare your samples before conducting experiment, okay? Preparation of samples, let's say you have nanomaterials, what type of nanomaterials, one material, two materials, hybridize them, uh, what would be the concentration, 0.1%, 0.2%, 0.3%, 0 and so on. So each and every details of that sample, you you need to prepare one sample, two sample, five sample. So you need to prepare the sample. <clears throat> Once you have the sample or other, other necessary preparation, then you can go to conduct the experiment, model, simulation. Let's say you have designed your questionnaire survey. Now you are going to uh, distribute that survey among different groups. Once you have collected the necessary data, uh, either using experiment, modeling, simulation, survey, or literature. Then next part is you need to analyze the data. You need to critically analyze them. You need to interpret them, and then you need to publish them in scientific journals. So here, as you can see, different types of computational tools I have shown, for example, NCs, transies, uh, one equipment I have shown. So when you are going to conduct experiments, so you may need DSC, TGA, thermal conductivity meter, SEM, FISEM, uh, BURET, PIPET, um, uh, IMES, TM, FISEM, XPS. So all these are shown here. So necessary equipment, software, all these are needed when you are going to conduct experiment. Okay. So um, this is again the list of the uh, content in my YouTube channel to serve the scientific community. These are available in my YouTube channel, again, to uh, reduce uh, time to prepare the uh, video content. As you have seen, I have 39 videos in my YouTube channel. So 
these are some of the samples. So those who are new, uh, watch them as you need. Okay, so I also request you to share these videos so that others also can be benefited. So I also have um, profile in LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube channel, as I mentioned, you can explore. So this is my email address to communicate with me. This is the YouTube channel link by which you can explore all the videos in my YouTube channel. Thank you very much for your attention. See you in the next video. Assalamu alaikum. Bye.